Yo, what's going on, everybody? You're watching Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Not yet at the studio today. Actually, my off day here at the house, but still wanted to get you guys a video on everything surrounding this team on the injury front. As Adrian Wojnarowski last night on ESPN prior to the game versus the Boston Celtics, he provided an in-depth injury update, not just on Julius Randle, but also OG Ananobi. And I think everybody coming out of that loss last night to Boston understands that if the New York Knicks are not healthy, if they do not have OG Ananobi back, if they do not have Julius Randle back, it is going to be an uphill battle for them to make noise in the NBA playoffs. If the Knicks want to do things that they have not done in 20 plus years, they are going to need to be healthy. And it sounds like OG Ananobi is on track to get back on the court. This is what Woj said, quote, OG Ananobi is right on schedule. They'll reevaluate him at the end of the week. And then the hope is he starts to get back out on the court and resume basketball activities. And that is great news for the New York Knicks. One thing that kept on popping off the screen to me watching that Knicks versus Celtics game last night is this is why we traded for OG Ananobi, to guard guys like Jalen Brown, to guard guys like Jason Tatum. Outside of Ananobi, the New York Knicks really don't have a long, lengthy wing defender. I appreciate Josh Hart and his hustle and his just ability to always give maximum effort, but he's a limited defender at six foot five with not that long of a wingspan. And when you add a guy like Ananobi into the mix, he's really just a game wrecker on the defensive end. We so often on this channel compare him to a dominant pass rusher where he can just single-handedly change the outcome and really the pace of game. Last night, the Knicks, they didn't have that. Jalen Brown came out and he was on fire in that first half. I believe he had 22 points and had only missed like two shots. Second half, didn't really do all that much, but the Celtics just caught fire from downtown. Also, it makes the Knicks defensive versatility just so much stronger. I just want to see this team fully healthy, but getting Ananobi back Hopefully by the beginning of March, I had heard March 1st for a long time was going to be the day that he's reevaluated. Woj is saying it'll be at the end of next week. So right around March 1st and the Knicks, their schedule does not get any easier. So getting Ananobi back will be huge. And we kind of forget how special this team was with Ananobi. I think when he first got here, they rattled off 12 in a row uh, with Jalen Brunson playing. He was 13 and one, the number one net rating in the NBA by a player and the number one net rating by a starting five in that time frame prior to him being injured. They were also the number one defense in the NBA. And that's kind of the identity that they got to get back to. If the New York Knicks want to win games in March, in April, in May, and potentially June, they're going to have to do it on the defensive side of the floor. And when you have Ananobi back out there, you have that type of ability. You have that type of player. Without him, it's going to be extremely tough. I really just want to see. Ananobi and Mitchell Robinson on the floor together behind Jalen Brunson and everybody else on this team and see what could happen. Everybody, though, I want them to show OG some love. Just type those OGs down below. I know he's a new player to this team. People are still trying to figure out what his game is, but I believe he might be the biggest X factor on this team. He gives you a chance to slow down the other team's number one player. And when you can do that, pair that with Jalen Brunson, the coaching of Tom Thibodeau, I truly believe this team can be anybody in the NBA. So drop those OGs down below and make sure you are subscribed to the channel because if we get any more news updates, injury updates, or anything surrounding this team, we're going to get you guys a video as soon as possible. So subscribe, turn your notifications on, and let's sub for some Knicks dubs. Let's get back in the win column more often. Also, Woj, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN said this about Julius Randle, and I'm not sure it's as good of an update as we got on Ananobi. Quote, there's not full clarity on Randle and his injury just yet. Last year, he had the ankle injury, and there was a lot of suggestion to have that surgery during the season. He didn't. His inclinations to play even hurt that his goal right now put anything off until the offseason. But that's still fluid. That's not fully decided. Concern this season about not just getting him back, but how effective can he be playing with that injured right shoulder? So Woj kind of telling you right now that Randall is still in the thick of things when it comes back from that rehab process. We have seen the last two days though that videos have come out and we've gotten to see Julius Randle getting shots up on the floor. We saw it on Madison Square Garden's floor last night prior to the game and we also saw that video that was leaked um, by the trainer at the NBA Players Association gym 
in New York. So Randall back out on the four, getting some shots up. And what it sounds like to me when you listen to Woj is Randall's just going to have to play through some pain and probably going to have to go through uh, uh, surgery once the offseason gets here. Luckily, it is his right shoulder and he is a lefty player, but that doesn't mean it's just going to be easy for him to get back. One, he's going to have to get his conditioning back. That's what makes Randall so good. He's one of the most in-shape players in the NBA, and he plays such a physical brand of basketball, he can tire a team out over the course of a night. But with Randall, he is such a bruiser. He is a mauler. He's a guy that gets physical in the paint. And if you've got a weak right shoulder and teams know that, they're going to take advantage of it and you're not going to be able to be as physical as you want. Hopefully he can come back and be healthy and maybe be 80, 85%. But I'm starting to become less optimistic that he will be 100% maybe when May, uh, April or May gets here. Who knows? Uh, Still a long way to go. Still 25 more games to go for the New York Knicks. Playoffs don't start until April 20th. We've got over a month and a half. Hopefully you can continue that rehab and get back out there because as, as bad as he struggled in the playoffs in his career, this team needs him out there. Jalen Brunson needs another guy that he can get the ball to and go score 20 points and dominate on glass and bring some physical presence back to this basketball team. Just going to break down to uh, last night's game coming up around the corner. But first, I got to tell you guys about our proud sponsor, Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use that promo code CLNS and Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. All you do is create a lineup of two to six players and you simply choose more or less on the projected stat line from Prize Picks. Check them out and use the promo code CLNS when you download the app at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and they will match your first deposit up to $100. Last night's game. Um, Look, it was always going to be tough for the New York Knicks to compete with the Boston Celtics when you have Precious Achua and Josh Hart in your starting lineup. No disrespect to Achua or no disrespect to Josh Hart, but the Knicks are going to have to be at full strength if they want to take down this team. I thought that the Knicks um, did a good job overall. Uh, In that first half, it was a tight game. They battled. I thought they did a really good job of running Boston off the three-point line. They held them to just 14 threes attempted, and that's really a number that Boston doesn't want to be around. They shoot the most threes per night in the NBA, but the problem was their ability to get to the paint and finish at the rim. I believe they had like 31 or 33 points at the half, the second most they had had in a season this year, and they were also shooting like 67, 70%, it felt like, for the entire game. Uh, I think the Knicks made a conscious effort to run the Celtics off the three-point line, but the dribble drive penetration off those spot up looks that Boston creates so easily really just had the Knicks in rotation all night long, specifically in that third quarter. And Boston ended up shooting like a record percentage from three. I mean, there was a point in the third quarter where it was a tie game. Then it got to a one point game and then it just got blown open. Uh, I don't remember the exact series of events, but it was Jason Tatum hit a three, then Presh Tachua missed a three. And then I think it was Porzingis hit a three. And then Isaiah Hardenstein didn't score in an ISO post-up situation. And then Jalen Brown hit a three, and we got to call a timeout. Like, if you're trying to answer Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis threes with Hardenstein post-ups and pressure to chew a spot-up threes, uh, you're not going to give yourself the highest chance to to win those matchups. The Knicks, I felt like, uh, in that third quarter, just kind of let it fall apart then you get the lead to back down to like seven eight or nine in that fourth quarter and you get the stop you need to get the rock and go the other way but Peyton Pritchard comes up with three offensive rebounds in one possession uh someone hits a dagger three and that was really the end of that uh Knicks just didn't really have enough juice it looked I mean to be honest with you you watch that game and it's like this team's probably the best team in basketball this team is without their third four second third and probably fourth or fifth best player on the team. I hate, um, I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm not trying to, um, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt or any sort of moral victories. um, Because at the end of the day, it's wins and losses. And the scoreboard says the scoreboard is, and the New York Knicks lost to the Boston Celtics by like 15 points last night. Um, I thought Josh Hart gave you great effort. I appreciated the way he played. Had a couple of bonehead mistakes, a couple fast break turnovers that really hurt. But I thought he played with juice. I thought he played with energy and effort, and it was a good Josh Hart game overall. Uh, Miles McBride did a really good job to close that second quarter, but they didn't get much tick in the second half. Uh, Boyan Bogdanovich 
really only played like eight minutes in the first half. And then by the time he came in the game in the second half, it was pretty much over. Alec Burks just needs to be a better player at this point. First couple games, he's just been erratic. We know that's what Burks is. He's a guy that gets up shots, uh, shots in bunches. He hasn't been that efficient overall. Hopefully that comes around. Um, trying to think. Uh, I'll, DiVincenzo was okay. Brunson was good. Um, I think he finished with like 33, 34, 35, and 8 or something like that. Um, but he can't do it himself. Like, you take out the second best player, the third best player, and the fifth best player on any team, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna really to really, really be tough. So overall, the Knicks, they got to get healthy. Sounds like OG is right on track. So um, he'll supposedly be getting back here pretty soon. Uh, I, I'll be looking at the beginning of March for that. Randall, still TBD um, on that front. So appreciate everybody for tuning in. If you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up icon on your way out. Show some love to the channel. And if you're not subscribed, change it. Subscribe. We do free videos every day. And even when we're at the crib, we're off or keeping you in the loop. So subscribe, turn your notices on, and let's go Knicks.